nowadays it's much more common, it's becoming increasingly common despite the political climate, that a lot of Latino creators are coming to the fore, that we're being represented on screen and behind the screen. It's, it's kind of amazing. Hi, I'm Paula Garces. I'm an actress, producer, and creator of Aluna Comics. I am currently working on a show called On My Block on Netflix, and we just got picked up for season two, so I guess we're funny. <laughs> My name is Jaime Carrillo, and I'm an official licensed artist for Lucasfilm, and I'm working also on Storm King Comics Productions. Hi, I'm Jorge Norgarn, and I'm currently the art director for the AR firm. We helped develop a AR cover for Storm King Comics. I am currently working also for Storm King Comics, your character is Andy King. I have worked for uh, video games, for animation, and other comics as well. Hi, my name is Adam Lance Garcia. I'm the writer and creator of Sons of Fire, and I'm also the licensed author behind the Green Llama Legacy series, and I'm a writer-producer on Radio Room, which is an audio uh, podcast, audio drama podcast. I just think with, uh, well, I'm looking for the word, I guess, more globalization, it's easier. You can live almost anywhere and still be able to access people that you would want to, whereas 20, 30 years ago, if you didn't live in one of the couple of big cities, Chicago, New York, LA, you weren't going to get any work. There was no way to meet these people and talk to them and get into the industry. With, through social media, you're able to connect with people across the world instantly. Um, I'm seeing people buy books that I never thought would find my books because I'm sharing on social media, because they're liking me on Facebook. It's but beyond that, I think as a, as a Latino creator, um, or at least half Latino creator, um, I'm half Jewish and half Puerto Rican, so we have a, it's a weird mix, we're Jew Ricans. <laughs> we, we'll do your taxes and throw a trash can through your window. Love it. You know, I'm not saying which is which though. Um, it, but it's weird, it's like just having your name as Garcia growing up, you know, a lot of the creators that you saw were Johnson, were Brooks, were um, names that weren't like mine and nowadays it's much more common, it's becoming increasingly common despite the political climate, that a lot of Latino creators are coming to the fore, that we're being represented on screen and behind the screen. It's, it's kind of amazing. Ten years ago, um, there was barely no Latina superheroes on anything really, no comic book heroes, no video gaming, nothing. And I was kind of frustrated about that, being a gamer and being into comics, that the only thing that was really remotely close to me was like Wonder Woman and she's like, not Latina. So, <laughs> so I decided to create my own comic book and I came out here in 2009 for my very first Comic Con with my little comic book hoping that somebody would care and the fans had my back. Uh, I was very lucky, I was on a show called The Shield, I had just done um, Knight Rider, uh, a reboot of it, and so people were like interested in me as far as being an actor. But then when they saw that I came out with a comic book and then it was a Latina comic book character, it was like a different boom for me. But it's been a long road. I mean, it's been 10 years and I still haven't reached my dream of uh, having Aluna, the TV show. She's been on a video game, which uh, we licensed the character out to Han, Heroes of New Earth, and they, that gave us another boost. So every year I come to Comic-Con really to just remind myself that there's people out there that do care about Latino creators, Latino writers, Latino uh, artists, uh, and producers. And um, it's, a, it's, it's just been a, a long, hard road being on top of an IP that you know has so much potential, but I guess people haven't caught up to it yet as far as um, the producers, the big producers, the big studios. But once I saw Wonder Woman and then I saw Black Panther, I was like, that's it. The Latino superhero is coming and I've known about it because I've had her in my heart, in my head. I've worked my ass off trying to produce this thing. So I think it's an exciting time not only for um, Latino creators and writers, producers, and artists obviously who sweat you know, uh, for this book to be out, but I think it's also um, the year of the woman. So let's, let's make it a Latina superhero, <laughs> hopefully.
And it's also a win-win situation for everyone. Yeah. Like Jaime just said, uh, this new internet era, this like boom to open the doors for everyone. Because he mentioned it like, if you weren't from Chicago, from New York, from LA, I don't know, uh, you weren't really able to do anything. And also people from Chicago weren't able to meet like a new talent, maybe from Venezuela, like Jorge here, uh, from, I don't know, Greece, from another, any other country. Singapore is getting big in the video game area. And uh, now you can, and know about their culture as well. Like we had Coco by Disney, for example. People love the Dia de Muertos from Mexico and Mexican. And uh, now we can share that to everyone. Not only with social media, but also technology itself. It's been advancing so much that um, the level, now you can actually connect with the program in, in a very artistic level. Uh, for example, programs like ZBrush, where it's a very intuitive program where you can actually sculpt. You know, I'm personally a sculptor and character designer, so I can go in and really just push uh, my designs through the computer very easily and very quick, and it's just, with such powerful tools nowadays, you can really come up with really awesome experiences, you know, and with, the, with this comic book with John Carpenter, um, it was just really nice to just come up with an idea that could bring an immersive experience to the comic book. And I think with the future, you know, who knows, maybe, maybe we'll be able to just jump into the, the comic book itself and really experience the, like, the art and, and, and the stories. And like player number one or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Something yeah. Amazing. So. My advice to young people would be that if you really believe in your story, and your story is something that you need to tell, it's something that you're so passionate about, that it's like something you dream about, something you wake up thinking about, don't give up. It's all about perseverance. It's all about dedication. It's all about discipline, whether you're a writer, creator, actor, artist, uh, producer, whatever. I mean, there's going to be tons of no's. Yeah. If people mm -hmm. knew how many no's I have gotten, and if they knew how many times I just basically was crazy, and thought instead of hearing no, I heard yes. <laughs> I would have never made the movies I've made. I would have never gone to any auditions and been part of any TV shows that I've been part of. I mean, as far as a big example, I, I'm, I had a recurring uh, character on uh, Sci-Fi's Warehouse 13. I was told that there was no way that they wanted a Latina on that show uh, by a lot of people before I even went to the audition. If I had internalized that, I wouldn't have gone to the audition and gotten the role. I would have just been like, oh, they don't really want a Latina, they don't really want my type of character. And so I would have probably given, given up a bad performance. So that's basically what I want to tell young people, is that if you have something that you're really passionate about, a story that you need to tell, that you think it's badass, creative, that you know that your friends are enjoying and every time you tell them about it, they're like, yeah, that would be so cool. I would totally play that game. Or I would totally be into that comic book. Or yeah, I want to be in that movie that you're talking about. Then you know you're in the right track. And all you have to do is just be dedicated. Just be dedicated, because there's going to be a lot of no's. Oh, don't be afraid to show it to the world. Oh, yeah. that's exactly yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah, just expose yourself as that's much as you exactly. can. And you know, the more love you put into your work, then that's going to show. It's going to show in your work the quality, you know, and, and, and just the ambition. You're, it's it's going to, they're going to be able to see it. You know? People kind of care and about what the world when you, when you love it. It shows, like you said, yeah. and people love that too. Oh. Like, oh my God, I love your character. You know, I felt so much for this. They, they call it a ship when they like, oh my God, I love this character and I, and I wish they were a part and they were a couple with this other character of yours. Oh my God, I feel that too. Yeah. Well, I, I think I understand what you're saying. I think the basic thing for a successful character or a book or a piece of artwork is that you have to feel for it. Mm -hmm. And I think, the best characters are underdogs, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. The ones that you know people think they have no shot of succeeding. Well, and a lot of people can see themselves in that because they're trying to do something with the with their creation, and they're the underdog trying That's to right. break into the. Big and piece. so, well, my point was going to be, what better underdog than a Latino creation, right? Yeah. Because well, <laughs> we've been I, so underrepresented for so right. long that we have this need to to break to, out. 
break out and shine and have people root for us and go, yeah, finally, a Latino superhero, a Latino creation. Well, and I think it has a lot to do with what you said is, is you have to get out there. You have to show your stuff. You can be the best artist, writer, creator in the world, but if you're sitting in your basement, and you never show anybody, then it doesn't matter. Yeah. I had a yeah. kid yesterday, I have a booth in, in the small press here at Comic-Con, and I just had a kid yesterday ask me, he says, what do you do, how do you break in? Or what do you do when you're told no? And the first thing I told him was, develop a thick skin. Because I first came here in <laughs> yeah. 2003, yeah. and I got, competition was less heavy back then. I brought my portfolio, I was ready to take on the world, thought I was gonna leave here with million dollar contracts, you know, I'm gonna work for all these great companies. Got a lot of positive feedback and I got one very stern no from like the big company. And I left with my tail between my legs and feeling sorry for myself. And I had a couple of mentors who told me, said, all it takes is the right person at the right time. If you're, again, with the hard work, with the dedication, with the love for your product, the right person at the right time will see it and say, that's what I've been looking for, that's what I want. But it, yeah. it's perseverance, you have to keep going. You can't it's, go show it once, take a no and go home. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. all about patience. That's the one thing I always tell young creators. Like, if it's not gonna happen today, it's gonna happen tomorrow. If it's not gonna happen tomorrow, it's gonna happen the day after that. It's about punching that wall with your fist and even if your fist gets bloody, you can break down through it.